Good evening. What is this job? What am I here to do? Well, it's pretty simple for me, really. I'm looking for the truth. In media, that's the only currency of any real value. And the pursuit of the truth doesn't go in straight lines. Sometimes you take one step forward and two back. But we now inhabit a world where the truth will get you cancelled and where narratives and, and ideology have replaced reality. For example, the women and women now disagree with that. Shut up, bigot. We live in a world where the truth is twisted and warped to fulfill a political agenda. For example, the demonization of the West and the characterization of this country as some kind of evil post-colonial regime, even though, in spite of this week's troubles, we boast arguably the most successful, diverse society on Earth. But even poor old Winston Churchill gets a kicking in the papers today. A council in Hertfordshire has decided that a portrait of our greatest ever Britain will hang alongside a lengthy and apologetic explanation of his links to racism, slavery and colonialism. Now, this is the man who defeated the greatest racist in history, Adolf Hitler. But now he's the bad guy. Make it make sense. As the son of Irish immigrants myself, I won't apologize for this country. In fact, I would invite the world to thank us for everything. The rule of law, parliamentary democracy, free markets, the industrial revolution, the Commonwealth, a historic legacy of investment in some of the poorest and most deprived nations on earth. We can be thanked for Shakespeare, the Beatles, JK Rowling, and yes, my favorite, Sir Elton John. You can thank us for international diplomacy, entrepreneurialism, creativity and art, and the small matter of our expensive and bloody efforts to end slavery. And you know something? You can thank us for Brexit too, which was one in the eye to the grim dystopian project of globalism. But this week, our country has been torn apart by civil disorder, which I condemn un- reservedly. How dare violent racist thugs attack our cops and wreak havoc in Southport with an absurd assault on a mosque whilst a community mourns. But to move forward, we need a frank national conversation and we need the truth. So from my analysis, what appears to have happened in the aftermath of the horrific murder of three little girls in Southport is a mixture of far right fascists who simply hate foreigners and want to return to the 1950s, messaging each other to meet up on Telegram, possibly fueled by Russian disinformation and lies on social media. But you also have decent, ordinary people of all races, backgrounds and religions simply unhappy with a dangerously open borders policy, which is changing the country before their very eyes. Which takes me to Sir Keir Starmer's speech in the aftermath of the riots, predictably taking the path of least resistance by focusing his response on the far right, as though that were the only issue at play here. I would expect nothing less from a man I have always considered to be a shallow, preening opportunist. This is a man who takes the knee to the latest woke cause and is so predictable in his vacuous, empty pronouncements. He may actually be our first AI prime minister, a human manifestation of chat GPT software gone wrong. We got a soundbite, didn't we? And a pink light show at number 10, which changes nothing and a partisan blame game which made anyone concerned about eye-watering levels of legal and illegal immigration feel like they'd been labelled far right. From a man who rails against the forces of division, his statement itself was divisive and noticeably lacking in nuance, creating anger among normal folk worried about the arrival on our shores on a daily basis of people whose backgrounds we do not know. People trying to fathom the economic and social cost of accommodating these people in our previously stable society. Is it far right 
to be concerned about the impact of 700,000 people a year legally entering the country on social cohesion, not to mention the impact on our creaking infrastructure, housing availability, the welfare bill and the NHS. In politics, the greatest weapon is mockery. And thousands of normal people have been mocking Starmer for this far right label. For example, this hilarious tweet from political commentator Amy Gallagher posing at a garden window, reading an intellectual book. And the tweet reads, according to Keir Starmer, apparently I'm a far right thug. How about this one from historian and broadcaster, a good friend of mine, Rafe Hadelman Koo. According to Starmer, I'm a far right thug. In World War II, my relatives were murdered by both the Nazis and communists. My father is Sikh. My late, my late mother was Polish. My family came to Britain in 1940 as part of the Polish government in exile. I love Britain. There are loads of these. Donna says, I'm a mum of two beautiful mixed race girls. Their safety and their rights are paramount to me. And according to Keir Starmer, that makes me a far right thug. We need our leaders to engage with the complex issues facing Britain, to tackle disgusting violence, absolutely, but to listen to the country too. Sir Keir Starmer is the leader of the United Kingdom, but presides over a country more disunited than ever. His divisive rhetoric will make things worse and come back to bite him. 